All right, so this is an unplanned video because there is a discussion that's come up from comments that you guys have posted that is some knowledge that's considered common knowledge about uh, an airplane at idle creating more drag with the prop than it was when it stopped. And the reason we brought this up was obviously because my engine out video and I mentioned if you guys think that your plane's not creating thrust at idle, go stand behind it. And there was a lot of comments that said, no, that's incorrect. You're actually creating more drag with an idling prop than you are stopped. Now, to preface this, because we're a mid debate, <laughs> for sake of argument in this one, we're talking about a fixed pitch propeller and we are talking the difference between a stopped prop and an idling prop, meaning that the engine's still running. We're not talking about a, a windmilling prop where the engine's actually dead and the wind is forcing the prop to turn the motor over because I would agree that that's probably more drag and that's a better argument, but I still think that my argument that when the engine is idling, it's less drag than the prop completely stopped. I'm Trent Palmer. I fly drones for a living and bush planes for fun. Follow along as I journey off the beaten path of aviation. If the engine's turning faster than what your best glide is, then the engine's gonna help you glide farther. And this is where the big challenge is, is bringing the science and the math into the discussion um, of end simulated engine out practice. And the real problem with the general rules of thumb is that like in this case with a fixed pitch prop and an engine at idle simulated engine out versus an engine, a prop stopped, um, what gives you like a real engine emergency? Will you glide farther with a real engine emergency or less when your prop stop versus simulated engine out? And this could actually save somebody's life. I think this is a worthwhile discussion, but you can't say in the argument, I think the reason the argument gets so intense for people is because they want to make a blanket statement that it is or it isn't. But they want to say it doesn't they, what, work that what way. What they want to say is that there's this disc now when the prop is moving and the disc is creating way more drag than just a single propeller area, which is complete ludicrous -y well, because a, a, there's no more surface area ever when it's moving or not moving. It's still the same propeller and, and the, rel the only thing that changes is the relative wind because now that propeller is spinning, screwing itself through the air that's why they used to call them in the old days an air screw, which is a great term for a propeller because they are changing the relative wind because they're now generating thrust. Now, if you change the relative wind enough to where instead of the back of the propeller, you know, generating thrust, it's now gen generating drag. Well, the, the real question is, is, is a spinning propeller generating more drag, more drag than a fixed propeller? Yeah. At the same so, RPM. I should clarify this again because I know for sure that when we hit a certain speed that you're creating more drag. Uh, there's a point where you change from thrust to drag at, at idle. Uh, but my question is, across the board, is there a point where you hit more drag with an idling propeller than just a stop propeller? Because you're going to increase drag at higher speeds with the fixed propeller, with it stopped, in the same sense that you might with the idling propeller. So I don't know where that, I, 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 res, I, I see what you're saying, yeah. and I agree with that. I think at low speeds, you're definitely going to be creating thrust. Yeah. At high speeds, you're going to be creating drag, but is it more drag than just the front face of that prop, that flat profile hitting, or is it better for it to be cut? The question isn't at what point is it creating more or less drag. The question is simple. Is a spinning propeller creating more drag than a fixed propeller? And that's the only question we're trying to answer. And if an engine that idled at 68 miles an hour is still generating a little bit of thrust, and I'm always practicing, always practicing to simulate the engine out, I'm not actually pulling the mixture, I will get a false sense of security as to how far I can make it to the runway. And that's the real scenario that I worry about. And I see the other scenario too. Right. Okay, so the three runs we need to do. My best glide is published at 60 miles per hour in the, in the carbon cup, okay. right? So I need to do three tests. At idle, do it with the key turned off. That's your engine out. You've had an engine failure, but you let it windmill. You don't slow the, pro you don't slow the, and it might actually stop at 60 miles an hour. There might be enough compression. I don't know, because I have a high compression motor. And then get my propeller stopped. And then go back to best glide. Go back to best glide. And see what, and see what my descent rate is. That's the test we need to do today. And let's, and let's all do it. We've all got slightly different airplanes, just different drag, best different, glide. and we'll Maybe. just set up for yeah. best glide. And then what I'd like to know if we have time before the sun goes down, at, at what, where does it cross? I'd like to know at what point is the engine at idle just neutral doing nothing 
And if I slowed my plane down just hypothetically, if I slowed, and it'll fly easily at 40 miles well, an hour, yeah, yeah, will, it, will it take me farther and give right. me a false, false sense of, of glide distance? I think it will. I think there's a point that it I will. I think it will. And Scott, Exciting. you've been mighty quiet. <laughs> what are your thoughts? My prop's not on my airplane, so I can't talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed we've got a, a lively debate going on, and Scott's just over yeah. here quiet. I don't think anybody's debating. I think we actually right all right know now. what the outcome is going to yeah. be. I think, that, I think that there's some fish stories being told in the aviation world, and it's probably time for us to either break it or bust it. Yeah, yeah. what do they do with it? Busters? It's just kind of a myth buster. Yeah, let's either prove it, confirm it, or let's shatter that misbelief. And let's encourage people to go out and try this stuff for themselves. It's not, it's not a bad thing to turn the key on your airplane. In, in the end, that's the whole thing, right? Is let's go play with airplanes, let's have fun, and let's really know. Let's really know our airplanes, and, and you should really know your airplane, because it's gonna be different for everybody. Find out. We're gonna go like find out. Car, so I'm, kind of excited. It's, I'm curious to see what's different between a direct drive airplane and a geared drive airplane. Oh, if that yeah. has any difference, because exactly. there's gotta be induced drag so, in the gearbox. Yeah. So. Okay, to stay true with my question here, I plan on doing two different flights, or two different tests, let's say. Uh, we're gonna set a, a top altitude, like a ceiling and a floor, probably 2,000 feet apart, and what we'll do is we will get stabilized before the higher altitude. We're gonna go between 8,000 and 6,000 feet. Uh, we'll do one stabilized at idle, uh, at best glide, go down, time the, the 2,000 foot descent, and then go back up, pull the motor, totally turn it off, do the same glide at best glide and uh, time it and then see which is better. I know that Mark's gonna try a couple different ones at different speeds. I just want the two to answer the main question of mine, is the idling prop more drag than a completely dead stopped prop? 7,500 now, coming to descent through 6,000. Okay, so your test is gonna be from 7,000 to 6,000. Correct. Okay, I will do the same. I need to climb a little bit more before I'm up there. Are you doing the first one at idle or prop stopped? The first one will just be at idle. And Freedom Fox is turning upwind as well for a simulated engine out. Okay, I am now stabilized. 60 miles an hour is what I'm showing. And I'm waiting to hit 7,000. I'm gonna time it from 7,000 down to 6,000. That'll be my test. And there we are, 7,000 feet. I'm seeing right at 600 feet a minute, maybe 625. That's about where we were. Man, that takes a really long time. Okay, so that was my first test. I went from 7,000 down to 6,000. I know I said I was gonna go to 8,000 down to 6,000, but my plane is overheating with these climbs. So I just did 1,000 feet at my indicated 60 miles an hour, which is my best glide. The next one, uh, shut the motor off and see how it does. So also take note, we are doing it right over the airport. So even if we could restart the prop, uh, we could just glide to the airport. I'm definitely descending faster with a stopped propeller, which would mean it's creating more drag. I knew it. I'm not going to call it yet, but I am pretty sure that we just busted this myth that people are calling me out. You guys, actually most of you guys are awesome. There was a couple that had commented that I was wrong, and hey, uh, I could be wrong. Uh, you know, it's, it wouldn't be the first time, won't be the last time. I'm only going to be able to do two tests at 60 because my propeller stopped on me. I tried to get it to windmill. Okay, let's get that thing. That is stopped. I am at 58. Let's get up to uh, 60, right where it wants to sit. And left downwind now, the back road, in. climbing through 6,200. Got you ahead of me in, uh, in sight, Mark. Okay, we are coming up on 7,000. And there it is. And I'm just gonna try to hold 60. I don't know. To me, it's looking pretty negligible between the two. Prop's trying to spin on me. Don't you go spinning, Prop. Don't you do it because then I think I'm adding more drag because I'm turning the motor over. So uh, that's not an accurate test, although this would be best glide with an actual engine out. So this is what it would look like, feel like, be like. It's so quiet in here. This is probably why when I had my engine out, it stressed me out so much. I'm like, right back. I'm not used to that. Cub is turning final three zero. All right, so we just flew directly from doing our tests out to, uh, I don't know, the dirt, yeah. to review uh, what our results were. Now, I looked at mine, my glide at 60 miles an hour at idle, I should say, was one minute 53 seconds to go 1,000 feet. Yeah. 
And when I had the prop stopped, it was one minute, 40 seconds. So it was 13 seconds quicker. Yeah. So I was descending faster. So I kind of had the same result and I'm almost done. I recorded the whole thing. And, but what I definitely found at best glide in my airplane with my prop, find out for yourself, it's good exercise. Um, that with the prop stopped, I did better than the engine off with the prop windmilling by 50 feet per minute. Um, so I had better glide with the prop stopped than windmilling, but not by much, surprisingly. But the biggest, longest glide was definitely, you know, engine at idle. So for me, the big lesson is, yeah, um, if, I, if I learned for me in my airplane, if my engine quit me in that airplane and I knew it wasn't gonna start up again, I would pitch up to almost a stall to get the prop stop. It would give me a tiny bit more gliding distance as I head down for best glide but the simulated engine off practice, thinking you're gonna make the runway every time and then real world engine off and prop still windmilling. If I practiced it and made myself perfect at hitting the numbers, I would come up short in the real world. So that's why we aim for the middle of the field and, and anticipate a loss and glide when the engine's actually off. Now, and the other thing I wanna to mention too is the, the effectiveness of your, your elevator and rudder. With your prop at idle, you're still pushing, I don't know how much uh, as far as wind speed over it, but a good amount. And once you're getting down into the flare portion, that's when you're gonna notice not having that extra air over your elevator. So when I've landed before with the prop stopped, I actually land a lot faster than I do with it you normally running. Yeah, yeah, you need to. And, that, and that's a very good point. I mean, the simulated engine out coming into a land, when you get real slow, like back down to a stall, that prop's definitely at idle, still blasting over the rudder, and it feels good. But when we were doing the engine stopped landing and you're coming back, even though it's just idle, there's just nothing there and you need speed because that engine suddenly feels like the engine feels 400 pounds heavier. I mean, it. There's not anything over that tail helping you. That made a big difference. That was a good point. So in my defense for the comments I got on the other video, we have proven that at least on our airplanes that glide slower than others uh, and with a fixed pitch prop that we do glide better with the engine at idle as in a simulated engine out than we do in an actual engine out, whether the prop is spinning or stopped. Either one, the glide is not as good as it would be in a simulated engine out. And that was across the board. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. I know it was a little techie nerdy, but I had to debunk that. We had to go there. So glad we did. If you like this video, you know the drill. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Come be our wingman. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.